This spring, we ran a storytelling lab. The aim was to take brilliant artists working in the area of the climate emergency and to give them the skills and the tools to create more change through their work. So we create work that's focused on society or big social issues or injustices. We didn't really know what to expect. Practically, what that meant was a programme that brought together tools and frameworks from the worlds of campaigning, consultancy, strategic communications, together with imagination activism and creative ideation. We started the lab with Claire Farrell from Extinction Rebellion, and she talked us through the current challenges in the environmental movement and the priorities for those wanting to make a change in this area. It's a very different general approach to get a targeted audience moving in a direction you want them to move, which isn't really a way we ever think about our work when we create theatre or create art. Paddy Lohman from the Reset Narratives community talked about narrative and behavioural insights and audience segmentation. Um, so he talked about the movable middle and how we needed to move from horror stories to love stories. This intersection between these techniques and these tools and these approaches that have been the bread and butter of, say, the advertising industry, they are ultimately a recognition of a game that we have to play, um, which is you know, human psychology and how we work and certainly how we've been conditioned to work. Phoebe Tickell from Moral Imaginations talked to us about the power of imagination and strengthening the imagination muscle. She has an organization that uh, uses imagination and training in imagination to instill social change. So that borders what we are doing or what we created in Horizon. They are really grappling with some of these questions of, of the tensions around scale, around audiences, around uh, defining the root problem that their artwork addresses, which was interesting because it also started to uncover blind spots and assumptions and things they hadn't thought about that were actually baked into their model of operating. I think it's something they'd never thought about before and it's quite common amongst artists that they create something that potentially has impact but they haven't designed it with those metrics and with those considerations in mind. So Wednesday we started working on what would eventually become the concept for Horizon V2. Then we decided to have a, a quantity over quality uh, form explosion where we just shouted words into the room of everything that Horizon could be in form. So it could be a Google Docs form or a board game or a Horizon website. in Minecraft. Horizon in Minecraft. <laughs> so then we created 25 mini concepts of Horizon version 2. But also thinking about how we can deepen the experience of the performance itself. Purpose, the strategy consultancy, creative agency and social movement incubator helped us to develop a theory of change for Horizon and figure out what type of impact the artists wanted to have. And we began to talk about evaluation, how we would know whether the change they were aiming to have was actually occurring. And it was actually during that like very theoretical discussion that we, I think, realized now I know what, what the next iteration of our project should be. We pitched today and we spent the entire day preparing. Thank you so much. Um, we feel very spoiled, I said to someone yesterday, just because of all the ideas and all the people helping us and working with us. That's been great. Over the past week, We've been thinking of how we can uh, make Horizon, the Horizon ecosystem, broader, deeper and farther. How can we reach more people, a broader kind of audience, and then deepen that audience's engagement with the climate crisis and uh, be a link in order so that they can go further into taking climate action in whatever way they want to. We do not come from a, like a, a world where these frameworks are used. We hope that we've managed to help this specific project have more 
impact. So much ground covered and the progress you've made is is massive. It's um, it's amazing. It's made me think like, wow, if you can do that in like five days, what, what might you do in half a year? It's really helpful for us to, for the first time ever, spend a week approaching our work from an impact standpoint and doing that with people that have a lot more expertise than us about it. We also hope that we've enabled the artists themselves to become better storytellers for change. I've acquired many new skills and ways of thinking. It seems from their response that that information and the set of tools and so on has been a welcome input for them and they will let it stew and from that take things that feel useful to them and feel effective for what they're trying to do. If we go too much into the direction of linear models and metrics and causal, you know, causal frameworks of we're going to do this and it's going to have this impact and this is how we're going to measure it, the danger is that we lose some of the original magic of the intervention. It was nice to see how there was a balance of being open um, to thinking about these things in a rigorous way and yet also protecting a space for intuition and for the original spark of, of the artwork itself. What I'm taking away from today's experience is how much potential there is for artists to make the bridge between their work and thinking carefully and rigorously around where the intervention into changing things and having impact lies. I do think it opened a door to another place our work could go.